Good evening. Um, welcome to the Scottsville Town, I'm um, sorry, Architectural Review Board meeting for Thursday, July 7th, 2022. My name is Matt Wallace. I serve as Scottsville Town Administrator. This meeting of the Architectural Review Board is being held at the town office at 401 Valley Street. Um, the town uh, meetings are open to the public and we have a number of opportunities for everyone to participate and observe our meetings. The meeting is open to the general public here. Um, we also have opportunities to participate remotely um, online or by calling on the phone. Uh, the uh, agenda includes matters from the public and uh, several working items taking public comment. If you're viewing the meeting in the future on our, on our uh, YouTube channel, thank you very much. Um, do you want to wait a moment before we come to order? Um, we'll, uh, we'll see about our attendance here shortly. Um, and I will mute this line now while we set up, which will see us come to order. Um, Do that, sir. Or, Indeed. Let's we'll get started and see if John uh, joins us this evening. All right, so we've got our quorum. Uh, looking at the agenda, I, we should add an item for interviewing candidates for our vacancy. We'll do that at the end before our adjournment. You have, um, you have one other new application, sir, at um, uh, Mm -hmm. um, they were, they were working on it, but it wasn't very good. Okay. We did talk about it. All right, so we'll put that under new business. All right, how do we feel about the agenda, everybody? Need a motion for it. 
I move to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. All right, approval of past minutes for our June 16th ARB meeting. I'll let you do this one. <laughs> This group might have the record for the uh, the most specific motion. So, uh, we took care of the uh, <laughs> capture that's the last day. Thank you. It, it does help with inspection afterwards. Uh, but I, know exactly what I'm I can go down in history with that. <laughs> when you're ready, a motion to approve the minutes. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Item three, matters from the public. It's a time for anyone in the public or in the Zoom uh, to share any comments they have with the ARB this evening. Yeah, All right. Uh, I move to matters from the public. Oh, you don't have to approve that. <laughs> this is this good. Is good. But this is good rhythm. Good That's, good. That's excellent practice. Yeah. Excellent practice. Um, all right. Having done, we'll move on to old business. Uh, but we have nothing here under old business. I think most of our old business here is under repair, maintenance, and enforcement issues. But we have no outstanding COAs for further review today. Correct. So we'll move right along to new business. Um, we have Scottsville Supply Company. So you guys can come on up. to um, fix the, the wood there that's rotted or, or broken there on the- So the we plan wood. ultimately to fix it, whether or not it's a wood putty or as a temporary solution, and ultimately replacing it with one of the other Okay. So it's not gonna permanently stay that way. But it won't, will it happen when you paint or- yeah. be better I'm not gonna go and paint in it. Uh, <laughs> that's what I, okay, just, it just will, check. It will look okay. correct whether yeah. it's a new board or whether it's filled. Okay. Is the label. It's actually glass behind that. So uh, we have mm. to kind of be careful who's, We're pound, see what we who's pounding on it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We have pictures of it when it was glass of a center door. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, the transom also. All right. 
So if you find glass behind there, what there will, we, glass there. It, will you uncover it and? Not at this point. Okay. There's two on one on the inside as well. Yes. So it would be a fairly large job to undo at that point and to see what structurally how it was compared to how it is now. When it had glass above, it was one center door of the building and it went in kind of like the 137. Um, East Main Street building did mm -hmm. before. That's how it was designed before. Mm -hmm. It didn't actually have two doors when it had the box of bottle. Got it. I think Bob had yeah, described some of that when he was the previous Senate, that he was, in, he was interested in a, a bigger sign mm -hmm. and he wasn't sure how to get attached to it. He was made the sign kind of Right. Right. And, and talking about that, ultimately you have to application for a sign. For a sign as well, yes. And, there's a debate whether to go on the yellow or get up high enough, basically where the electric line needs to be. The electric line you can see in, in order to get above the awning the 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 that goes to the door. Mm -hmm. So it'll be higher, but you know, just like Bangs is higher than your recommended numbers, but it's high and higher in order to overcome the awnings, mm -hmm. these things. But that'll be submitted yet another. So I think I'd like to review our guidelines for paint colors. Mm -hmm. I think we have that, right? Mm -hmm. We review that. Yeah. that and, and, uh, yeah. You have a building in town that's already yellow. It's a some very similar color. Mm -hmm. and, and Chinese is much the same color. Uh -huh. yeah. And this building already had it before it was just yeah. made out. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a complementary color scheme. It is. It's like a green blue on the doors right now. You can actually open the doors and see like, the different shades of light between blue and green on the side. Store the doors in the baby blue right now. Mm -hmm. So, just to review yellow for what's now off white, correct, and the but doors, it's yellow, yeah, it's right? Mm -hmm. And then yellow for the doors as well, correct? Okay. And then it would be the blue and or white. So blue would be the trim. So the windows, all windows on the building would have the blue trim. So the half moon and then along the side going down on the street would all be in the blue that I submitted. And then the blue would also be around um, that big yellow piece going the length of the building. It would also be around that to be debate on white versus blue is some of the areas of the doors. It's whether or not it's going to be all blue or if it's going to be blue around the main frame of the door and then white up top, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because it's currently white right now. Oh, and thank, thank you for mentioning the side and the yeah. Side and back. Yeah, yeah there's back windows as well. Because they need something on them. They're on his barrels. Glazing. <laughs> so, are you just again? Sorry to need clarity on this, but um, are you? Sure. Yeah. Are you debating between white and? Blue so, in general. No. So this. Mm -hmm. This would be the blue. The trim that you kind of see is the blue green now. Mm -hmm. Would also be the blue green. This would be the yellow. Mm -hmm. The doors, both doors here, would be yellow. The trim, this will be around the doors for the main frame of the door, mm -hmm. would be yellow. It's up here where the air conditioner is. Is the debate as to whether or not that is going to end up being the blue? Or if it's going to end up being part of the white. We don't know if it's going to be the blue to blue, if that makes a lot of sense. There's already white. All of the windows 
going around the building, including the back will be the blue. So two doors yellow, this yellow, everything else blue, minus a little bit up here might still remain this white. Mm -hmm. That would be a refresh. Does that make sense? Yeah. The building is so hard because it's like it, it's inherently already sort of um, blocky in its, you know, in its uh, renovations and and there's not a whole lot of consistency in like connections between trim and, you know, windows and things like that. And so I, I guess I worry a little bit about blue, white and yellow all I being... Do. I'm perfectly fine with doing all blue, yellow, and we go like two colors. Mm -hmm. And that's perfectly fine. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I, I think I'd prefer if if you're going to use the blue, be consistent with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. you're talking about the AC part also doing the blue, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. But the AC unit doesn't get a different color. It's already a white. Mm -hmm. That's right. So you already have a white. So. Yeah, and I think that's okay. I think because when we're thinking about colors, we're thinking about the building itself. You know, AC is my come in and out, and so that's um, sort of exempt, I guess, from the from the palette in a way. Mm -hmm. um, but I think Aaron's point because we often we're, we often look for consistency in how we're applying colors across a building, so that that makes sense to me. And I think they're they're nice complementary colors that you've chosen for these uh, for these pieces. Okay, so to understand this. On all of the buildings in town, you're looking for consistency and not just for an array of randomness. Correct. Well, I think going with the, the two tones, right? Going with the two versus colors. Versus adding white to make it not look like so old. It's not a whole lot of white that we're talking about. It's just, it's just a six inch picture. floor. We're just trying to have the option of painting white if it gets too dark. It's like it's like it's Mm. Would you like to be able to have the option of repainting the white that exists? All you're doing is changing the door color, which is already a color. The door and the trim. And the yellow is already a color. So you already have three colors on the <laughs> door. And one of the yellow and one's a white, pretty much the same. It's just green or blue. So it really boils down. I think the hope would be that if you have the option of two colors, using those two colors to create more consistency than you have currently. Well, I agree with you, but we'd like to reserve them to repeat the white as exists. And in fact, if it is too dark, you don't want a business that's not inviting. So it's a business thing as well. And it already has three colors. Nice and the yellow is a color pretty much consistent with what we're already redoing. Didn't have to come ask for it. And the white, we didn't have to ask. All we're asking for is change green to blue. Yeah, I, I like the consistency of the two colors to, to Aaron's point about sort of creating consistency with color in the building. Um, I don't know. I mean, the, the above the. Well, yeah, they have three colors in the building next door. Right, that's what I'm saying. Basically, it has an awning, it's going to be a different color. Uh -huh. It has a door, a different color, it's quite true. So, what is, will be the difference? is the area that you're talking about that you want to reserve the right to either paint white it's or blue? White. Is the area that you want to reserve the right to paint white or blue just the board above the air conditioner? No, ma'am. It might be just down the side of the door. Depends on, depends on how much, whether it's whether the blue or gold makes it too dark, or whether it needs to be white, clean, clean white rather than dirty spider web. Wait, you're trying to make a better looking door and clean it up. And I completely understand that. Yeah, I mean, the building next door, you're already approving three colors. Right immediately next door, attached to this building. The only white on the window and the blue door. You've already got three colors. So consistency 
how we want to look at it. And, and 330 has three colors plus brick as well. Mm -hmm. So you're right. Your argument of, of consistency is not holding water. Well, I, I know you guys are trying to improve this building. That's not, that's not what I'm debating. I think the, um, and I, we're, we're talking about this, this building, you're presenting two colors. And so I think it's it has three now. I know it does. Yeah. I know I, that's not the, we're not debating whether it has. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Why are you trying to limit this building out of all the buildings in town with only two colors versus three? I would like to know that answer. I don't think anyone's trying to. So you presented two colors. Yeah, well, two colors white. and a white. I'm more than happy to use two The white is far right because it already is. No, I, th I think what the discussion is at this point is if you're going with two colors, and we like these two colors, to make it consistent across the building. But my question, do I need to submit a third color for the white? Do I need to go back to an obvious submit the third color for the white since it already pre exists? And Go ahead and repaint what already pre exists without approval. Since it is pre existing and was already approved prior to this meeting. No, I think we would need to approve the whatever whatever the repaint is going to be since we're adding, since you're changing these colors. That would just be part of the, the whole ceiling. But if I don't change the part that's already white, how would that really be changing the colors? It wouldn't be. That would just be including and making it look fresher. Yeah. And make fresh fresher. And making sure that each of the pieces fall along with what we agreed would be repainted or not repainted in a new color. So, does everybody who repaints their building have to come back and ask for approval? Is that correct? No, if you're doing the whole thing in a new, in the same existing colors, you don't have to do that. Does it state? Can you show me what it states? The white already exists on that building. I know. You just said it's an existing color, you don't have to come back and get approved. The white already exists. That's right. But if all I'm saying is if we're, if you're painting it new colors, we would well, just want to make sure that. But we're asking for it. The new color is not. The, the yellow has faded so much, it's repainted. The white is repainted. All you're talking about is changing the green slash blue that exists now. Mm -hmm. So this new blue, this one color change, mm -hmm. that's all we're asking about. But you, you did mention that you were going to paint blue down the side of the building, correct? Right. On the windows? Yeah. That is a color change to those items, but not to every item on the building. Is there something where I have to change every single color on the building when I submit an application? I think I just want to understand like where I'm missing what you guys are referring to. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So let me pause. So right now, yeah. We've got this blue going down the side of the building, right? Going down the alley. Check. Painting the trim. What is the different type of window? It's not I don't know what the type is called. It's like a, the half moon window. The half moon. Painting that blue. Check. Painting the trim. Check. Okay. Painting the doors. Yellow and the. What I'm looking at is literally the physical trim here. Yes. It's all one solid piece on both sides for each door as blue. Uh -huh. What we are trying to reserve because it's already white, because we're not sure if it's going to look absolutely hideous, to be perfectly honest with you, mm -hmm. is to reserve the right to, to repaint this white since it already exists two, as white. It's pretty much the two sides and the top of the air conditioner. Right. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And, we're, and we're thumbs up on the blue trim around the door. Okay. And so I think. The only thing that we're discussing at, at this point is around the AC. Is around the AC. Right. That's right. Around the AC. And the last thing that Aaron said was just to be consistent with the rest of that trim to also do that in blue. And what I'm hearing is that I know you want to reserve it white. You're, you're concerned it might be too dark. Correct. Right. Yes. So that, that's where we are. Correct. That's where we are. Yeah. Okay. What I want, so what I can specifically tell you what I'm worried about is that if I go and paint this as well as it's because they actually extend in from the outside trim, so it's two different pieces, it's not one solid piece. Mm -hmm. Is that with your air conditioner, it's already between silver looking and white, 
plus it has the drip trays with the physical white tubing that you can see it comes down the wall. Mm -hmm. I am concerned that if you paint that blue, all of that is going to show up and look a lot worse than other areas. Everybody knows where those seats do not look great. Mm -hmm. like it's just a matter of fact, they just don't. So, mm -hmm. so I guess my question would be, why not paint all of the trim around the door white? Because we're trying to draw more attention to the building. And we've got, I've looked at several different color schemes, like specifically in Williamsburg. And that's a lot of the other things, especially for houses. So that sounds great to me. I, I think you're going to be calling more attention to the air conditioner if you leave that back area white. Because what will happen in visually is that if you paint it all blue, it will look like a tall blue door. If you paint what's behind the air conditioner unit, you're framing the air conditioner unit with white. And I think it will call more attention to it. Okay, I'm going to ask you another question. So if these ACs are ever removed, do you not see that looking way too blocky and the fact that this trim is blue here is going to combine way too much together and almost clash with each other versus having a slight break? Now, I could get with painting that yellow. Well, so trim that the, that the white around the AC might actually make the AC pop more visually just because it's lighter than everything else and elevated. Uh, it's kind of a tricky spot because of those AC units, right? If there was a window in there or something like that, this would be a slightly easier decision to make. Do you know? Um, Could you, I mean, you can see all the way up, all the way down the other side of one piece, and then the physical header is another piece. Mm -hmm. This whole portion around physically sits so down. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that I won't paint it blue, but if we paint it and we're like, holy crap, it looks absolutely terrible, I'd like to be able to paint it back white. Yeah. Well, I think. We currently have six piece doors are like a bluish screen. So when there's bluish screen and a trim is bluish screen. And they went with white all around there, and then the bluish screen here and yellow here. This physical piece right here is white as it sits right now. And that was simply so if somebody had a class time that it wouldn't constantly water sitting on top of it. I can tell you the trim around this is at least like stainless steel. Right. The blocks for grout is white. They're like a mm -hmm. green color. Sandy color. Between white and sandy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Personally, I think if the AC is unpainted, it's going to be white anyways. It sounds like you're going to start off by painting it blue regardless to see what it's like. Mm -hmm. Personally, the white thing to me is not that big of a deal. Like just because the AC is already white and there's already right. some white there, but if you're going to paint it, I'd like the idea of painting it blue first to see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So I would like to advise that I'd like the ARB to advise that it's all paint, painted blue. Mm -hmm. And then um, maybe someone could revisit it on site 
with the business owners to assess. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? That makes sense. Yeah. Matt, Matt would do that anyway. As okay. Part of his checking. It's easy to modify. Right. The COA. Okay. Can I ask you a question. Mm -hmm. On 3.30, you have black trim. You also have brick. Yeah, and and part of that too, with the painting of that those two doors, um, the property owner was interested in the possibility of two different businesses, and so if you have two different doors, the idea would be paint one color for each business so that you can articulate the two different spaces. So since this is one business, you don't think that it's that's a business deal rather right? than an architectural deal. No, that's that's how a property owner is trying to improve and paint their building. And we're trying to accommodate a business then to paint their building in alignment with something that, you know, suits the purpose of the building. Because that's ultimately what we talk about here is what's the purpose of the building, how it's being used. So, um, but that's, yeah, but for the purposes here, you know, we like the color scheme. You're painting your two doors according to this palette, the trim according to this palette, the wood frame stand above according to this palette down the side is good. Yeah. The only thing we're, we're talking about here is sort of how the ACs will address the street in relation to the, the rest of the colors. And it sounds like, um, you know, we'll lead with the blue. And then if it appears to not work, to go with the white. I do recognize that the ACs is a part, and being that it's not the same is tricky because originally those were probably windows, maybe windows again, I don't know. Um, they're, they were put in temporarily, but they're still there. Right. <laughs> yeah. And they are in air conditioning source. Okay. Yeah. Are they they're your AC source now? Yes. They're AC okay. source and heat source as well. Okay. We use them for yeah, radiators, as they see the radiators for heat, yeah. but they use the ones that on wires. Yeah. Well, I think we're all on the same page that we don't want the AC units to stand up more than the, they already do. So uh, painting it blue and then reassessing with you all um, on site to see how it looks. Because I do think, I think the just the discussion here is painting it all blue will make the ACs disappear a little more than painting the whole bit behind it, which basically gives a bigger white frame to them. So that's why I think we're interested in seeing the yeah, whole thing. Want some leeway if it turns out too negative. Yes, and I think, and that's what we, that's where that's where yeah, we're going. At, at that point, all we can be doing is reverting back to the existing color. That's right. That's right. But I just want to be clear that the reason why we're having this conversation is because there's that's what we wanted to. That's what we are expressing concern about. We don't want that AC to pop just like you don't want right. it to pop too much. And we, it sounds like we're thinking we're that, for flexibility. yeah, and I think we can do that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to check in on, check in on any white. Yeah. As needed. Okay. Start, go with the blue and see how the white goes. Okay. Can I ask for permission to start the blue on the trim before I paint this blue? Because it's hard to just come back and we're talking yeah. about it because it asks for so many kids. See what it looks like and then come back and if I need to paint it blue, then go back to white at that point. That's right. Oh, so that would be the way to do it. And if it, if it looks good that way, you can propose to leave it. Okay. Well, are you looking to do this pretty soon? Okay. I'll keep in touch with you on it. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, first Thursday of the month. So if, if we need to take a couple weeks to do it, if we need to check in on anything for the August meeting, yeah. that's that's ready. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. But we just need a motion. So I have those notes. Yeah. Motion to approve that with an order. Uh, I move to approve the um, uh, COA is discussed. It's fine. COA is discussed. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. I don't need specificity. <laughs> we Great. got it on the Thank you. <laughs> I move to second that. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. And opposed? Aye. Thank you all. And thank you for bringing the materials and everything for us to, to look at. Thank you. Yep. That's a
Thank you, Joe. Thank, thank you all very much. Thank you. Are you are you another applicant here this evening? I'm just I guess my sign. Yeah. Yes, okay. Do we have a COA for this? Is flowers on the run? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Zach. Um, do we have a COA for it? This paperwork was here last month, and we were looking for. That's right. Yeah. Do we? Do you have that paperwork, Matt? So I can get the questions right. When we do signs, pretty much it, it's pretty boilerplate because the sign mm -hmm. size and all of that is and that's the kind of thing we need to see. Because yeah, it's basically all it is. Yeah. <laughs> and so that was the question, I think. Um, what the uh, what the color scheme was going to be and what the exact sort of lettering. The the the, 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 the end the end is is it's not pink for me that black. It's the, it's the, I, I disapprove of that. They sent me that like that, and I disapproved of it. So that's that's what's taking so long. It's it's, it's styrofoam. It's the, 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 the sign is made like a surfboard. It's, it's covered in clear resin and mm -hmm. it's styrofoam. You know, like like a surfboard, so it's yeah. so can handle you know the, the elements. And, yeah. And um, that's pretty much it. It's pretty basic. If they, if they see it, if they want it, like you said, if they want to come there, they'll come. Okay. <laughs> and and that, but it'll be all black lettering. The, all black lettering. Okay. Basic. <laughs> You know, hot we shelf flowers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll open to the board for discussion then of the. I'm so curious the why they did the N in red. It, it, it was supposed. To, it was. Supposed to, it, it, I don't know why they did it like that, but um, I think they're making a joke because the, it's really pink, right? And I'm not, and, I, and I'm straight, so so I think it's my brother. So he's messing with me because of pink ink. So I don't know. You know, because I do flowers doesn't mean I'm that. Yeah. All right, so um, I think the question would be, what's the material of the sign? It's, it's, it's just, it's just, um, it's, it's, it's a it's foam board, really. It's, yeah. it's, you know, step, like you use for insulation, just a, just a foam, polystyrofoam, whatever it is. Same thing to make surfboards out of, or skin boards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's just, it's just, is that an approved material to be? Well, see, just, 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 just gloss. It's about fiberglass resin. It's, it's like a surfboard. Uh huh. You know, it's, it's going to feel like a little surfboard. One of those when you're at the beach, with the, but the people ride it on on a you know skin board. Oh, things. like a boogie board. Like a, yeah, but thin, a real thin boogie board. And that holds up outside, okay? Uh -huh, that's so, why I'm uh, putting the resin on there because it'll, 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 it'll it, it doesn't wax it. You know, it'll, I want to worry about it fading. Okay. You know? Okay. And and, it's, and it'll give it some weight because the other the, the reason I have the other thing up there now with the wood on it. Is because when the wind comes, right? The other one I had was just you know, blowing all over the place. So the one up there now, that, that's too heavy. I don't, that thing's ugly. I, I I had a girlfriend think she was an artist, you know, and I didn't want to mean her. So I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So other, you know, you know, it, it keep the peace in the family. Yeah. So I guess. I... <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I don't want to get pulled with my hair, my hair something. So let, it, let, it, let it hang there for a minute. So. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's 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 um i'd say an inch maybe an inch or three, like, like it's a two by four inch and three quarters something like that yeah, yeah. okay very it's very simple basic yeah. and, and 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 um where the um where the chains go through there's two pieces of metal tubing so so it resins into it so you know it won't wear it's kind of mm -hmm. you can't put you know you don't want to chase me you know eventually the holes will get bigger you know break, break like that so so I think my only concern is the weight because things like boogie boards and surfboards are supposed to be light. And when you have wind coming through, it's going to swing well, around. Well, see, that's not, that's not a situation. See, right now, what we can do before the resin goes on it is I can, I can, we can, we can put, uh, take a hole saw, right? And, and drill, ponder down in a little bit and put some, put, put some, Piece of metal there to hold, you know, you set some weight and, and incorporate that in there and then, then, then throw the resin on it. So, let's say the, the metal panels that we see, so with the wood construction ones, they, they kind of hold in place there. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, this will have, this will have, this will have like, you won't even see it, but in there, if you cut out some of the foam, uh -huh. I, can, I can put anything in there, a piece of steel pipe, anything you won't even see, just some, just some weight. Okay. Use a cast iron or something, just to give it some. Yeah, I'm going to do that. You know, I mean, because it's, it's, it's I can't. The other one that I had that was made out of the foam before, mm -hmm. without the resin on it, just painted. When the wind came, it just 
Blew it right off. It, it ripped it, it ripped the foam and the chains and everything two right. times. So. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, so I had to design something better. I so guess. um what where are we with the flammability of styrofoam? Because that's one of our concerns with signs. Well, flam right? turns out there the county is only concerned about flammability if it's a lit sign. Ah, okay. Yeah. So okay. anything that's just free hanging. Okay. Is, uh, 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 yeah, that's what right. we're worried about. Got it. So this, okay. this does not okay. warrant that concern. Um, see what you're saying with the weights? I'd be concerned about like whether we could see those weights. You or... won't see them. Okay. Yeah, there'd be, it's kind of like taking a piece of styrofoam and boring, boring some of it out and then putting weight in there and then putting the, uh, putting, putting another piece of like a sandwich. Okay. You won't see it. And, um, the other thing is that, I mean, you know, I'm buying, you know, I, 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 the building, he demands selling me the building, okay? So we're, we're, we're in some kind of contract with that. And is there any way I will, I will ever be able to put some corner windows in that place? I mean, it, 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 I'm having no, I, Well, let's talk about your sign before we get to corner windows. Um, tell me about why you're using styrofoam and not like a, a typical sign. Material. Because it's not going to, because it's, the way we're doing it, I'm not going to have to go up there every year and paint it, just wax it a little bit. It's going to last, it's unique, okay. it looks cool, it's mm -hmm. durable, it lasts, it lasts a long time, and and it's a kind of artwork, you know, it's kind of cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they've been at the beach for 17 years, you know. Yeah, nice. right on in June. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it our text box, yeah. <laughs> and so what's the size of this? It's, 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 it's 16 inches by, um, I think it's 50, uh, 40, 44 inches, 16, 16 by 44 is what it is. Okay. It's, it's 48 feet wide for that. Right. Yeah. It's exactly it is exactly the same length as the as as the as the um, brace as the bracket. So, mm -hmm. so it's, it's that it's that long and it dangles down sixteen inches. Because mm -hmm. at my door, it's just the building's tiny, so I can't have anything that dangles. I can't have anything too, too, too you know too deep. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's fine. We're in there. If you if you hang it, make sure that the bottom of the sign is clear seven feet from the ground. No problem. Little problem you need is the yeah. Not a problem. Yeah, I have an eight foot. I, I get on an eight foot ladder, and it's barely, you know. Uh, okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. My I, also, I was trying to explain all that from just the right out. Yeah. And that was like, and if they see the sign, uh, if they, if they see what you see, what you say? If they want to come here, they'll come. I was, I was just like, what was that supposed to mean, man? Yes. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I move to approve the COA. Um, my glasses. Okay, I second that. All in favor? Okay. Aye. Thank you. And opposed. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. All right. To answer your question regarding corner windows, um, you, I think that you'd have a really hard time putting corner windows into that building because of the structural viability of that building. A lot is relying on those windows and you would have to do a lot of structural work to put a corner window in. As far as more windows, that's a, that's another oh, well, yeah, topic. Well, the windows in the front. I think we could we could discuss that. Because yeah. it's, 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 it really my, my shop when I when when, when I on my Google my business and all that stuff. You know when 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 I look at my, when they want things to the outside mm -hmm. and and I, I find myself having to take things like I took some mirrors right mm -hmm. and, and and I put them against the wall mm -hmm. on both sides so it looked like windows one time. You know I mean I'm out there doing these kind of you know I'm like building props to make it look like that. And then, then, then if they come see it, they're like, ah, yeah. you know? And, 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 and I can't put any, if I, I can't put bouquets outside because of the weather. 
and and keeping it's, it's hard to display it's hard to show my work off yes. you know it looks right. like a dog house yeah know? but for, for the price i can't complain you only want one hundred twenty thousand dollars for it. i'm not gonna complain about yeah, it yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 we've um there are different brick commercial buildings in town that have had doors or windows at different times wow. uh the building that baked on the james and if you walk by it there's a you can see it the tall rectangle in the brick right there actually where a door used to be oh, yeah, right yeah so um some of these commercial buildings have been modified like that yeah. historically so that wouldn't be um outside of yeah. precedent the structural issue would be something to think about oh. but, but i think we'd be open to okay to talking yeah. about when you get there yeah okay now, now is it the deal with the building you know, the history of the building was whoever owned wherever the building the taverns are now i guess whoever owned that he, he he built that building next door, and I know this for a fact because the man that I had signed me knew that you know he broke here, you know, Bill Pollard knew everything. He said that the, that that, that um that the only reason that building was there is because the man, husband, and wife used to fight all the time. So so they, he built that there to, as his little dog has to hide out in because you know they were they were, had some bad fights. There. So I mean that's why there's not that many windows on. You know, sure. I mean, that's right. it was just pretty basic. You know, if they had anything left over, they couldn't fit into the store or whatever they put in there. And he, he would hide out there when they got in their argument. So so, so I mean I was, that's probably why there's not any windows. In it, you know? I mean that's 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 his because to me it was like essentially the building. Right. I yeah. think I think with the windows, you just want to keep in mind the already existing windows and having the proposed windows be uh, in line with the same aesthetic. Right. Right. Yeah. And while we're here in this conversation, I, I was going to ask one more question too. The windows that are in it, they're not energy efficient. I mean, they're they're, they're kind of you know they're single pane. Anybody, they're easy of wooden frames. Anybody can break. I can break into my building in two seconds. Mm -hmm. And 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 and. Yeah, I mean, so, so, so is it, are, are any of these other buildings when they went, are, are, are they allowed to have the same look kind of stuff, but, but, but go with the, the dual insulated, nice, nice, mm -hmm. nice window? Yeah. That's so, yeah. Yes. One of the things that we look at with older windows like this, especially because they're on the first floor, is trying to maintain the existing material. Okay. So see if you can get improved wooden windows to okay. go on those spaces. We've done some replacements that are not wood but they've been up on the second floor. Uh -huh. So from a distance, you can sort of fake it a little bit, but it still keeps the same, you know, window lines. Because this one is so close to the street and first floor, you, the double pane and efficiency is a go. Yeah. But see if you can find some wood, wood ones. Not to problem. To go in the- Some of the store that's a historic window and they, they may, oh, it's, I've seen them before. I've, I've yeah, seen them. Wood case in this house. I've seen some of the old um, houses that they've redone in Skyler. Um, they're in historic up there on the, by the dam. Uh -huh. They've replaced the, the, the old windows with their hand with their with the weights and the old wooden ones mm -hmm. with some um, Anderson wood frame dual yep. insulated. You know, with brass. You know, they were they're really nice. So, yep. And pillow, and pillow also. Yeah. Yep. So that would be a, you know that would. Help me. And plus, and, and also another thing is everybody sits in those milk crates on the side of my building uh -huh. and it smokes here and, it, and, it, and I, I hear and you hear everything going on out there. There's another it's like it's like yeah. I don't want to hear about the things that they're hearing about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, the ARB deals with buildings. Uh, so so that's that's our purview. We can talk about the building. Uh, okay. The building's causing you trouble. Yeah. Well, I guess yeah. I along those lines. Could he put up a small sign that says, please do not loiter? Not allowed to. Well, and they're not really, they're, they're, they're at their building. They own so their not, land. They own yeah. all the way to my window. Oh, yeah. and I, got yeah. it. So okay. it's tight. And you know, having a neighbor. I'd rather be nice to me anyway than you prepare my food. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, that's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. It is tight in there though. Yeah. yeah, but feel free to come back when you've got That's an idea cool. for windows or uh, and whatnot. So, all right, y'all. Yeah, I got work to do. Yeah, thanks, 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 yeah. thanks, thanks, yeah. thanks for being in town too. Your flowers. You too. too. All right, so those are our two new business items. Um, <clears throat> all right, uh, so that brings us to repair, maintenance, and enforcement.
consultation with any property owners in attendance. I'm looking to hear from um, the chapter staff. They let me know that they can come over when they got a little closer to closing time. Okay. Um, so maybe closing the all right, so we'll we'll float that. Um, um, I also got one of our four condition folks. He's having trouble with the Zoom, but I think home. He's at the airport. Here um, is the office of the Warren Street House. He's, he's, he's trying to get in. Oh, okay. My home. Yeah. Warren Street House. Which one are you talking about? All Warren. It's um, two twenty Warren. I think it was on the minor side. Yeah, do we have the um past the past the three in a row? Okay. Okay. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, you're time, okay? Can you pull up the notes for uh yeah. three thirty to sign out what we're talking about? Um good evening, Mr. Pitiokis. Hi. Hello. I'm sorry for the trouble on our Zoom. I've got you on my phone here. You're you're um, in our room with the board uh, here now. Thank you. Okay. Super. I appreciate your flexibility with your um, with your travel plans. Um, we'll take well, a few minutes here before the plan. Very good, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Great. Um, Thank you for joining us this evening. This is Zach Bullock. I'm the chair of the ARB. Um, Aaron Root, our vice chair, and uh, Austin Twitchell are also here this evening. Thank you for phoning in. Um, Matt's pulling up our notes that we made as part of our inventory this winter so that we know exactly what we're talking about before we start um, discussing your property. Uh, and, and, and Peter, I'll, I'll work on that, but um, I, I sent you that letter that described the issues. So uh, can, can you tell us what you had in mind to, to work on for the case? Yeah, so um, there actually have been workers there over the last few days. Um, but um, so we received the list and um, one of the items had to do with the shutters. And I think whoever did the inspection um, might have mistook. Um, uh, so so the, the, the shutters were originally green and then they were painted over with a black paint, which I guess started to peel away revealing some of the green and 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 I guess in the letter it was assumed and I could see how one might assume that the the, the green was not paint but was some kind of mold or mildew building up on the on the shutters but at any rate um, they're due for <laughs> they're overdue to be repainted um, and so we were originally going to just paint them black again. And the painter told us that we'd probably be better off getting something other than black only because the black, um, as we all know, you know, black absorbs sunlight and heat um, much, much more so than other colors. And what we ended up with really isn't far from black, but it's a dark green that uh, you know, that I brought over to Matt's office yesterday. So we'd like to proceed with that. And um, as to the other items, yes, they're dealing with replacing the gutter uh, that um, uh, fell off the front of the house and the siding, the portions of siding that need to be replaced. So I think those are the the um, the items that were cited in the letter. I don't have it in front of me. I'm doing this off the my memory. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, you know, it, of course, as we all know, materials and contractors have been hard to come by these days. Everybody is very busy. Yes. And uh, but at any rate, they are there. They've been there this week. 
which is good. And they did notice when they removed the gutter that the soffit, the very small, uh, narrow soffit uh, between the gutters and the house really needed to be replaced. So they're, they're doing that too. And I think we all know that uh, with older houses, you know, it tends to be the case that whenever you peel something away, you find something else underneath that needs to be dealt with. So that's what we're doing now and uh, working our way towards completing the items that uh, were noted in the uh, letter that Matt sent to us a few months ago now. Okay, great, thank you. That's a great, uh, it's helpful to have that update. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great thing that um, that you're doing this. And, um, uh, you know, I certainly, um, you know, want to commend you all and Matt for doing this in a uh, reasonable and effective way. I mean, I, I worked for municipal government in New York many, many years ago, and uh, you know, sometimes heavy handed approaches tend to be counterproductive. Uh, but I, but I think the way that the town is approaching this, um, uh, hopefully over time will, will benefit the entire town. But at this point, it, it looks like it's heading in the right direction. Well, thank you very much for that. I, I appreciate that. And I appreciate, um, you, you taking the time to get with us this evening and start moving forward with remediating the issues that that we identified. Okay. Do we do we need or do we have a COA for the um, paint color change? Do we need one? Now, do we do we need a, a COA to remediate the issue? We probably should, huh? Yeah, it helps if it's not a if it's not a real quick fix that they can just do and tell us it's not. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to do a COA, a certificate of appropriateness tonight for this work. Um, we are going to add notes about the color sample that you've given. And, okay. and we're basically going to move the language from the letter that was served to you to the COA so that when Matt stops by in six months for his mid year review of, of COAs, um, he'll be able to just go down the list to check off to make sure that the work's been completed. Okay. Very good. And if there's anything else that we can do, please let us know. Okay. Is there anything else from the board before we let our? I I just uh, would like to say that this is a nice paint color, and we appreciate you um, working to be consistent with the what's already happening on um, <coughs> shutters. Okay. Well. Um, thank you too. Um, I'm sorry to start off with that. Yeah. Speaking to repairing the issues documented in there. That's right. The paint color. Yep. Is, there any, is there any work being done that's not in the letter? The soffit. He's replacing a soffit, it sounded like. The needed. And gutters. The gutters are on here. Okay. There's a detached portion of the uh, gutter along the front roof line, missing fascia siding section um, on the front wall which may have left the interior exposed or unsealed. Oh, the only other thing that's on here is unpainted wood porch posts. Do you plan to paint those? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're, that's right, I remember that now, yeah. We'll take care of that too. Um, we were thinking we would just paint those white, if that makes sense. Yeah, which is a replace in kind. Yeah, and since you're replacing in kind, we don't need to see a sample for that. Okay. But, but we will make a note that they will be painted that way. All right. Mr. Kitsiok, is, is um, Michelle Allahan still a legal owner of the property? Yes, Michelle's here with me if you need to talk to her. Um, uh, are, are the two of you uh, legally connected in some way? Oh yeah, we're married. We've Thanks. been married for seven and a half years now. Okay, thank you. So we have the But title, I mean the, the deeds in her name. That's fine. Thank you. Anything else for the property for applicant before we close? All right. 
All right, well, that's all from us tonight. Thank you again for joining us. And Matt will be uh, following up with you as you move forward with your, uh, with your work. Okay, super. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. So when we, uh, you guys, this is sort of just a related you know, to keeping track of this kind of work. Um, have you guys collated the findings from the inventory into a single running document? They are. I'm having trouble getting okay. All right. So last year, it was, yeah, it was helpful to have that tracker sheet too, so that we can review that as we go, just so we know where we are and make that part of our poor condition notices for multiple properties. Okay. Any other consultation with property owners in attendance? Waiting for tavern people potentially. Yes. And they're 280 Valley Street, right? Yes. Okay. The other. Um, oh, 155 West Main. Check. Yes. Uh, take care. The, um, the other legal notice in progress is the kind of priority for condition property at 380 um, East Main, the dollhouse. Yeah. Um, so I, I checked on the kind of final notice language with the town attorney and mm -hmm. sent that in. That was a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. We could double check it and send it. I haven't gotten the certified mail confirmation yet. Okay. It could be slow in the mail or run off a little bit. So I, I don't know that I, I won't claim, you know, dodging the notice yet. Yeah. Well, then let's take, um, I was looking at our, in our minutes, it sounds like August was the month when we would take a look at properties rated for that we haven't heard from anyone about to decide which ones to pursue at that time. Um, Cause at that point we will have tripped past the deadline for meeting with us. And, and since there are also other legal proceedings related to those properties, we might wanna take that into consideration too. So I think it's worthwhile reevaluating things in August. And with those um, properties, you have communicated our own maintenance issues related to those sales, correct? That, that's right. Um, Kevin and town council talked about this a little bit at their last recession. Welcome, thank you. Um, that um, we, had, we noticed the tax auction was happening on these, mm -hmm. and uh, the town attorney knows the attorneys involved in the tax matter um, well. And so we, we got uh, like an auctioneer's announcement that we Describe the historic nature of these and the fact that there is a zoning enforcement matter pending. And we, we wish for historic preservation. Yes. And it's something that the buyer should be aware of. Yep. And we look forward to restoring it. Okay. Something. We're looking to buy a property cheap. Questions cash here. Right. Good. Okay. All right. Um, then, then we'll move on to chewing the gun. Time around the James. Well, okay. thank you for joining us. Come on, come on up. Would you introduce yourself to the board? Huh? Would you introduce yourself to the board? Uh, my name is Nikki Anderson, and I'm the general manager at the tab. Hey, Nikki. Hi, how are you? Good. We'll, we'll introduce ourselves. I'm, I'm Zach Bullock. I'm the, the chair of the ARB. I'm Aaron Root. I'm the vice chair. Austin Twitchell. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Too. But thanks for taking time to come in tonight. So we're just talking about the painting that was done a few months ago. And so anytime painting's updated in town, you have to get a COA or certificate of appropriateness just to meet with us to talk through how it's going to be done so that we're making sure that we're meeting all the town's goals for not historic preservation always, but certainly appropriateness within the historic overlay district. Okay. So Matt, if you can pull up just the... We, we did okay with the This street view is from a couple of years ago. And this was this was last summer, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and my my apologies for not getting on it right away, but we had some well, we had some great times. 
So while Matt's pulling that up, so since the work we've done with, without a COA, we are going to be looking to get a COA on file tonight for the work. Okay. And when work is done that is unpermitted, the board can ask property owners to change things. Um, the most drastic example of that was working with the, the church down the road here, put up a fence, unpermitted, didn't sort of, didn't fit our fence guidelines. They took down the fence, redid it. Um, so anyway, so I'll just tell you what's on the table, I guess. Um, so we just want to talk, you can talk us through sort of the painting that was done here, then we'll turn it over to the board to just talk about colors and what was done and if we feel that anything needs to be done to change it. So can you give us a sense of why you all painted what you all painted? Um, my dad was just trying to do some things around it, kind of, you know, refreshing the look and um, just kind of get it back up to where it kind of used to be. I know he changed, uh, he painted the stairway and he changed the color of the pole there. Um, but that's just what he was trying to do. He was just trying to make it to improve it, look, like to improve it, make yeah. it look better. Um, okay. He wasn't trying to do anything, um, I guess, to hurt it or anything. Uh, of course. So I had came in and um, told him that I would help him with it. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of went by his design. I didn't realize that we had to get a permit or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so he painted down the, um, and you see where it's just the uh, cement wall down. Mm -hmm. He uh, painted the top white, the bottom black there too, just to, again, try to give it a more upper look, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I think the things we're concerned about are number one, the um, foundation was cracking and the black paint covers up that, um, uh, that deterioration. And we just want to make sure that it's not just the paint that's covering it up, but no. that it was uh, he, uh, restored. He, yeah, he did. No, no, no. It was breaking over. He actually put, I don't know what he used, but he put some stuff on it and then we painted it. Okay. So we okay. didn't um, just paint over the crack. Okay. Off. Okay. You, you've, got some, you've got some handy folks on your staff. Did you do it yourself or did you get a contract? Uh, no, uh, me and my dad did. Um, he had a, um, we had one other person, Terrell, he helped us, but it was me. Okay. Yeah, okay. And then the second concern was, um, there's the, the uh, riser of the step and then the run of the step. So the run is the horizontal, which is painted black. Right. Um, and we were concerned about essentially um, one of our safety yeah so sort of just sort of seeing in the dark since the steps are what you see is the step which is dark when you're leaving so that was our concern mm -hmm. um, that's why we did the two different color tones so that way it would mark the flat um platform of where you're walking and then the wall base was white we were kind of so it just didn't blend in i guess kind of showing i didn't think about it you know i guess at night mm -hmm. um but during the day just so you could see that it's an actual step there mm -hmm. And I guess to answer our question, really, like we should we should go stand there and yeah, see if we can, you know, if if it all blends in or not. Yeah. I mean, that's really. The I've, I've walked up and down those steps. Yeah. I've, I've not found them to be great. Uh, colored in, <laughs> unsafely. Um, mostly of our use is the front entrance for last year. Um, no, um, to to help me better, I actually keep that door locked. You can't even have alcohol right there on that patio. So, um, and I actually have a sign on it that asks people to please use my patio entrance just because that's where my host is mm -hmm. and it's more efficient for the business. Yeah. So there hasn't been any kind of safety concerns, nobody's falling, but it's also not um, No, as of right now, there's been no, no injury, no falls okay. that I know of. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The next concern was um, the, the column in the front looks like it, it has only one layer of paint and the black is showing through. Okay. And then the last um, concern was that this didn't get finished. So the black doesn't paint the black and we were uh, confused about what was happening. 
So Dad, um, I guess he's got to come back with this. Dad, he gets on the scaffold. I will not. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I do. I do chemo every six months and things like that. And my balance isn't always great for me, um, so I will not get on a scaffold. Um, but that is something he's doing. Um, I, I can discuss it with him and ask him if he could please come and finish it. Um, well, that he was between doing you know things at you know his house that he had to get done on the permits and things. Um, and so I can ask him to, if you guys need it finished, um, to come do that. I, I just can't personally do it myself. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. yeah. But I think, yeah, making sure for consistency across the building that that is continued. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and if the second, the second cone looks like needs on the pillar, it's, okay. uh, the column yeah. itself rather, to make sure that it's all nice and white. Okay. That the black doesn't pop through. Okay. We also, for consistency at the top of the column, the capital there, it's black and then the inner circle is white. Since the bottom is all black, it would also be nice to have the top as matte. <laughs> so it would also be nice to have that top capital just also be black sort of as to echo the top and bottom. Okay, where, where the, the pole starts to meet mm -hmm. at the bottom, the, you want that white. That's right. And then at the top where the hand is currently, the white spots right there, you want black or? We had, we had discussed that. I don't know if the, if the board is still interested in that <laughs> before. Would you use the column? I'm actually wondering if that's a reflection. Is that actually no, white? white? So oh, it is. It's, it's okay. A it's, it's a okay. design within the thing. And I think yeah. Make it different. I don't know. <laughs> We're just trying to find balance. You know, right, 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 right. Things like sort of balance. I mean, aesthetically, I don't think you, I don't think you'd lose the detail, and I think it'd be nice if it were all black. Okay, so that black, rethink the full white, and the bottom white as well. Well, no, the bottom can stay black. The okay. bottom of the column. I think okay. that yeah. So the top and bottom are both. I got you. I question's fine. Okay. Yeah, and then continuing the black and white lines across the top. Okay. So it's consistent. Okay. 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 I think that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any, any other comments from the board? I don't think so. Thanks for being here. Yeah, yeah I do. You know, I know you guys are busy over there and it's hard to get time to get away to come to see Okay. Yeah, okay. it helps us keep things moving. So thank you. All right, thank you. I move to approve the COA for Tower Dolphin Jakes. All in favor? Aye. And opposed. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. It. Thanks Appreciate for stopping it. by. Have a nice evening. Good to see you. That's uh, that's pretty good to this. That's uh, get it. Matt, um, did you ever check in with Farmstead Permits Building Owner about the <laughs> painting? And was that were had they proposed? Did they have a COA for that? They did. I went. Through, I went through those details. It looked like to me the the shade of green on um, the right hand door uh -huh. was slightly different than what we approved. Uh -huh. We discussed a darker green, okay. a little closer to what's behind you there on the tablecloth, and, and we got something a little closer to a, a verdigris. Maybe. Uh, okay. Um, I, th I think that's the case, but I'm not sure my, I don't trust my printout colors. And that is an example of where right. it's helpful to specify the, the exact color. Right. So I'm not certain if, if they changed their minds on the dark green or if I'm just reading it wrong. Okay. But we did approve different color doors and the, the base concrete and the black trim and everything on the back of the building looks good. Okay. The other thing they didn't do, um, 
Ms. Greer described a um, like like finding another set of architectural salvage double doors for the other side. Right. And they chose not to do that and just repainted the existing door right. in the color we approved, but they didn't change doors the way they said they might. Okay. Okay. That's that's what I couldn't figure out. Okay. okay. Thanks um, for that clarity. Yeah, but that was a that was a good um, follow up inspection to okay. to go and do. And I was talking with the the tenants whether they thought anything else was going to change. I tried to confirm with them on the colors, but sometimes sometimes the tenant winds up keeping the extra paint in place so they can do touch ups. But the, the painter painters came and took the paint away. Okay. So the so the folks there didn't know. Okay. What what was going okay. on? Thank you. All right. Uh, good. All right. So six C landscaping violation at nine sixty nine Valley Street. Is this Dollar General? This is the Dollar yes. General. Um, Making progress. Uh -huh. um, I, I sent um, I sent the legal notice again, confirming that language with our attorney. So this is a zoning violation, and yeah. what needs to be done. Um, the staff term of the school thing is really interesting. Yes. Both, both the public and the public and the public. So mm -hmm. I got the I got that agency on the phone, the office and owner, and the person responsible for it didn't know what to talk about. So here's the paper show. Mm -hmm. Remember this before. Mm -hmm. Your team just consented to do this for twice and not done it. Mm -hmm. And our patients on zoning compliance right now. Mm -hmm. um, so it needs to be done or it will be integrated. Mm -hmm. So I had that conversation at the end of last week. And um, she said she's going to look at her, look at her files and test. Mm -hmm. so this, this was not controversial when your company approved it, and then it didn't get done. They right. approved it last summer, yeah. Um, and the middle of summer was not the right time to plant plants. Yeah. And we said we would allow this to be done in the, in the fall or in the spring. Mm -hmm. The spring came and nothing happened. Yeah. That's and that's what faces that approach. Mm -hmm. So she um, understood that and was going to go find out. Okay. Oh, one of the one of the questions that she had was about lease responsibility, and I did not appreciate the back and forth. So yeah, we had that issue before. That's right. The tenant says it's the landlord's problem, and the landlord says it's the tenant's problem. Uh -huh. Commercial leases can be confusing. That way. You can do it either way. Yeah. But we approached Dollar General on this first, and they were they were quite sure that they were, they were responsible for the inside of the building, which they renovated, uh -huh. and they were not responsible for the landlord. Either way, MCE Commercial is the legal owner of this building. So if we serve them with something, they're responsible for it. They can collect damages from the tenant. Got it. But it's the owner's problem. Got it. So I'm, I'm okay. confident for our firm putting in with MCE is who we need to be doing. Okay. And that they, right. So they need to hold the tenant to account for something. Yeah. They can deal with that through um, the lease violation. That's right. But it's still got it. Okay. So that's the that's the taking <laughs> school experience. <laughs> yeah. This is quite a song. Yeah. Okay. Well, that sounds like something. <laughs> so that's <laughs> okay. So now we're communicating to the correct people in the correct way. And that is a step in the right direction. <laughs> okay. But we'll keep this. I'd like to keep this under repair maintenance and enforcement issues. September, October will be here before you know. That's right. Exactly. So that's what we'll do. Okay. All right, poor condition notices for multiple properties. Anything else there? Okay. I, I have a question. And by anything else there, I have an idea. Um, I'm thinking of the bus depot because we approved the COA for that property. And then COVID happened. And we were waiting for the property owner to hear back from VDOT specifically about the um, parking area. And that is now a year or two out from any work being done. And the hill's looking tough. It's like some water issues down there. And so I'm curious where we are just as a town in terms of vi being in violation. Is the bus depot in violation of anything or not? And I think this VDOT thing's a little. Yeah, this, well, the COA we approved has expired. Right. So if, if you want to do some more, you would Regardless. Right. Um, I made a I made a friendly call last week asking about status because mm -hmm. I've done some economic development work with them recently. The 
always getting fixed up soon and I'll have a good attempt mm -hmm. uh, with my small business hat on. Mm -hmm. um, but the disturbed area was small enough that it didn't need some more permanent. Right. So the, the erosion and sediment issue doesn't, it's it's a small, it's like a small lot, but it doesn't trick the county from water rights. You can you can cover it any wall out in the backyard and have pollution problems and that's it's not pollution, right? Um for eco violations, if there were a structural hazard, you've got you've got that gap on the support back wall. So you might come and ask the building official to take a look at it if the kids are playing back there, they might be in a good spot. Yeah. I I wonder. So did he do work there and then leave? Did what happened? They they had a good project. Yeah. They they commenced work. They did a couple days of excavation on that, mm -hmm. and then they realized what an engineering issue they had because there was a real drainage problem. So it needed reinforcement and drainage. They needed a structural engineer. Um, and that rang the alarm bells, so it stopped. Then the partnership dissolved, and the new owner didn't have the cash to continue the work as a group. So I think it's then, and it's their responsibility to deal with the erosion and hydrological issue that they have. It will be. Well, it should be now because they already started work and they made that issue, right? Like the. Well, that that's what I'm trying to figure out is if if anything has happened that trips a violation. And it sounds like county level no. If, if it were, it would be on like, the building permit side. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I just don't know that really. Yeah. Because um, the, the building is okay. And he, and he did work to mm -hmm. bring it out in poor condition. So all the windows are fixed. Right. The building's sealed. He did some work under the old bus, you know, awning. The, the building is more stable than the site's not. Right. Yeah. And it is eroded. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's concerning. Okay. So I guess, so I guess, okay. So I, but I, I'd like to get him here at some point for sure. soon. For sure. Just, was, yeah. yeah. Just to like know like where you are with the project kind of as a goodwill sort of thing. Cause I know it doesn't sound like there's anything enforceable at this time. Not that I know of, but right. I, sometimes I, I hesitate to, to call that in because I don't know what's going to happen after I make a call. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, so I think before we did that, it would be good to just get him here to talk about the project, where he is, because I don't think we've talked to him in more than a, in over a year. This was an idea we were excited about, man. That was beautiful. Beautiful idea. Beautiful idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got very close to something. Mm -hmm. So um, and we might still again. Yeah, so reach out to him and see if he can join us in August, um, just to give us an update on where he is. And what we might be able to do in the, in the meantime. Even if it's just sort of uh, groundskeeping, it's kind of yeah, just kind of like overgrown even. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Anything else under repair maintenance and enforcement issues? Okay, then we'll go into our uh, interview for vacancy. Uh, I'd like to go into closed session for this. I like I like going into closed session. Closed session. We look back, is there a guideline for two tone buildings in the ARB guidelines? No. And could you please do an inventory and look straight across the street, look at Town Hall, look at Baines, look at uh, having three and four cars? Oh, yeah, no. Okay. And, and, and we think we're being concerned by being limited like that. I mean, the white exists. If I right to put it back where, where the white is. Mm -hmm. And the other two colors are complementary to the door or the arch, or, you know, I think we need some leeway with that white, yellow, blue. You did. We gave it to I you. I know, but it's, it's so tentative. I mean, you might be come straight back down the doors as they are now. The white, we don't know until we really see it up. And we hate to have it. Start painting and come to another meeting and have the building look like crap in the meantime. Mm -hmm. We'd like to have some leeway to have those three colors. Well, we've approved the COA as it is. 
So it, it will take another meeting to, to do it. Yeah. Uh, or should we go to council? What should we do? I mean, yeah, I mean, you can. Summer is going to move on and we have. Can I ask a question? Uh huh. On a previous COA, you said Tavern with James, who did work how many months ago? Yeah. That you didn't really actually do anything other than simply say, hey, we need to come inside a piece of paper. So theoretically, couldn't every building owner do that at this point? And you're just going to go and be like, okay, we just need to sign a piece of paper? Because that's the way it kind of looks, to be perfectly honest. So you all came in and you... Well, well let me just answer this question. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not trying to start from you. I'm just saying that's the way it looks. I, I know. So let me be clear about what we did with the tower okay. on the James here. Okay. Work was unpermitted. We had them in to get a COA to either remediate work or finish work. And so what they are going to do is finish the work because there's unfinished work. Right. And we get in a tough spot here because when work is unpermitted, mm -hmm. because sometimes stuff is done wrong okay. or out of keeping with what the town's interest is as a historic right. district. So we as a board are in a tough spot with unpermitted work. It makes things harder. But so, but we're also interested in working with property owners, yeah. right? To try to make it manageable for them. That's why we right? come back in. And so with the tavern on the James, they did not just sign a piece of paper. We're gonna have them complete two pieces, actually three pieces of unfinished work on the building. So that's what that COA was getting them to do, as well as verifying that the base of the building was shored up. Right. so that it's not eroded. So we had some questions answered that we had outstanding for that property. So right. it wasn't just, so wasn't just coming in to, you know, check off your boxes. We, right. we got some things done. But here. what, it, to, to be perfectly honest, what it yeah. looks like, instead of you guys sitting there discussing, do hey, we like this or do we not like this idea? It looks more like, a, okay, sure, go ahead and complete what you've already done, whether or not you liked it or didn't like it. That's what it looks like outside of and, and that's where the trick with the unpermitted work kind of comes into play. Because had, okay. had a property owner come here first, as you did, okay. we, can, we can have a, a back and forth about, well, so what's our color palette? What's appropriate for the building? What's okay. the purpose of the building? What are you trying to achieve? And then you work something out that works. And when we do that, the property owners we work with were, were successful in that way. But that's why, that's why I have to come and meet first. So would you ever so. really plan is what they decided to do and what they're not going to be. That is my question for you. That I know. Do you have originally approved that of the steps being two different colors and obtaining the cement that you don't have anywhere else on the majority of buildings in town because that is a historic thing? Sure. It's hard to answer it after the fact, not just because the membership of the board was different then. Okay. Yeah. And I feel we're a little out of order talking about somebody else's problem. No, that's so, right. I'm just asking. But like, I, as an example. Question, it's as an example. example. Yeah, but, but, I, I, but that's the process. And, and, I, and the question yeah, of the two tunnels, I mean, Mr. Neighbors is not the only one that's had two tunnels. That's right. Well, there's and nothing everyone else. Has. Just to clarify the two tone thing. We're, yeah. we're, you know, we, we aren't opposed to two tones or three tones or, or one tone necessarily, right? The certificate of appropriateness is about what is appropriate for the building and its purpose, right? And so you, you presented us with two colors for us to consider tonight. And so we're thinking two tones, because we have two so colors. So my question during when I was talking yeah. was that did I need to present you with white as well? That was my question. I know we- Since it existed, we had to thank you for saying. That's right. I only submitted what we were going to change, not what was, what was already pre-existing. That's correct. And so did I need to submit white if I wanted to have white on my palette of colors on that building? It would be good, well, because ultimately there are actually different colors of white. Um, but yeah, if you were going to, I think you would, if you if white was going to be one of your main colors on the building, you should submit a sample of each color okay, you're going yes. to use. But the pre-existing yeah. white comes down to size now, right? Yeah. So you it, could be, it could be just fresh paint on it. It, it could be all, all I'm saying, George, that that's that's good protocol. We're, 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 we're trying not to start I understand the and have sit yeah, for those are the rules. 30 we like, weeks to, I, to get approved. I know, I know. You won't wait 30 weeks. So, and we, what we approved tonight is giving you latitude to paint the trim, the blue that you wanted to do, yeah. and to lead with the blue around the ACs. If that doesn't work, go white. 
I think the I think the board here feels confident that that blue will look good in there. And I think I can give you an example right now. Mr. Neighbors already went and painted his AC unit because he has two colors on his building. Yeah. He went and painted it to match the the main purple or the lighter yeah. color of that building, so that it would not stand out and look absolutely hideous. I took pictures of it. He likes to say. No, it's okay if you do that. I don't want to paint the AC. No, what? No, I don't <laughs> want you to paint the AC. We've given you approval okay. Okay. to to paint around the AC blue or white okay. based on what it looks like. We may send out an email and say, come take a look. That's fine. And that, that's, 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 that's not give and take. And that, can't be, that's exactly that's right. That's the leeway we get. That's the leeway we get. And that's okay. that's our point person yeah. for getting out there to do that. So the leeway that the board can't give that's is, right. here's your set of colors. In anything in any combination of this. No, but the white exists all the way down the door right now. So we, we had to just freshen the paint. It's still that's so if I decided not to right turn the doors white, I mean blue, I could could I leave it as white or I have to go back to you for approval of a pre-existing color on that photo. You would actually now need to come back because what we approved was you wanting to paint it blue. That's interesting. That's what you asked for, and so that's what we approved. Okay, so on every building in town, that is how this works, then, correct? Yeah. That's... And if not, if I were to leave it white, would I come back and essentially do what the tavern is doing very clearly? Like, okay, you don't have to paint it? Because well, that's essentially what you just said. You don't have to remediate or change something. If, 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 if what, you, what you approved, what we approved. Right, I understand what you approved. I do understand. Yeah. But that's my question for you. Yeah, that would that would be undesirable um, because ultimately we're we're trying to we're trying, no, to, we're trying to work. Well, as long as somebody's accessible and we can yeah. communicate within the data. Yeah. That's right. That's good. Yeah. Yes. And we've done well communicate in the past that everything just think the data might be questioned about. I do need to ask him that about um, the building next door about the plants that are different painting where they get people sent to the walk up and down to the sidewalk. I think it's pretty, you know, I think it, 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 it is. is. So let's see that. That's an existing. Yes, Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Do you have the. Uh... Yeah. Um, well, as they read, you want me to go ahead and step out and hold it. I mean, I don't be, I assume I'm the only person. But you are. You can stay here while I read this. Sure. Yeah. Rule. I, yeah. No rules. Yeah. Those are the rules. Those are the rules. You don't have to leave it until I. <laughs> I move that the board enter a closed meeting as authorized in subsection A of Virginia Code, section 2.2 3711. Specifically, the subsection assignment, appointment, promotion, performance, demotion, salaries. Oh, wait, am I doing the right one? Salaries. I think you said appointments. So. Good. Uh, appointment, or I left off. Disciplining or resignation of specific public officers, appointees, or employees of any public body. All in favor? Aye. And opposed. We are now in closed.